In today's video, we will be exploring the subreddit r glitch in the matrix. As with my other True Reports videos, I encourage you to reach out to the writers of these stories if you've had any similar experiences. Links are provided in the description in the order the stories appear. Now, onto the events as recounted by those that experienced them. Last Monday, I was at the clinic checking on my dad and I decided to stay the night with him to keep him company. We started to talk about all sorts of things, and then I mentioned to him that I had the creepiest sense of deja vu prior to coming to the clinic. One thing led to another, and we went on talking about the brain, false memories, and so on. Then my dad told me one of the weirdest things that he had ever experienced back in his 20s. He never told anyone anything about this before, so I was intrigued. He said he was still a college student at the time. It was the holidays for our country and he came back to his hometown. He had some old friends who invited him to their place for dinner. He stayed up with them until around midnight, then he left to go to his parents' house. My dad's hometown is small, and people don't hang around the streets, especially that late in the late fall. He remembered walking and then hearing the sounds of hooves clicking against the concrete sidewalk. He looked behind him and he saw a horse. The horse didn't have a saddle or a bridle on. Dad said it was a typical dark brown horse, the kind your mind would conjure up whenever you thought of the word horse. Dad thought that it must have run off from somewhere, but he didn't know of any farms around the town. The horse kept walking. It moved past my father, paying him no attention. Dad was confused, so he followed the horse. The horse took a turn and my father went after it, only to find nothing. The turn the horse took was a dead end alley. Dad said that there were no doors or passages or side buildings, just a plain dead end. The horse was nowhere to be seen, the sound of its hooves disappeared. Dad was so creeped out, he ran all the way home. To this day, he has no idea where that horse came from and to where it went. I'm a dormist high schooler. On Monday, I was getting on the bus when I noticed that no one was on the bus except for me and the bus driver. It was weird because that was the last bus that was going to the town that day. Anyway, I sat down at my usual seat and enjoyed the loneliness. I fell asleep, so I don't remember much from the road. Anyways, no one boarded or left the bus on the entire route. When I arrived at the bus station, I stepped off the bus and noticed that no one was there at the bus station either. It was starting to get weird. I was walking towards the dorm with anxiety as I met no one on the road. When I got to the dorm, no one was there either. I started to panic and instantly started the security measure, which is writing notes so I can make sure I'm not asleep. My phone battery died at 1932. I walked inside the dormitory building and guess what? No one was there. I was thinking, is there a break now or what? I searched everywhere for people, but I couldn't find anyone. So I got up to my room, made my bed, and tried to sleep as I was very tired. I couldn't sleep because I kept having thoughts of what the hell was happening. I put my phone on the charger and made a bowl of instant soup. When I finished, I tried to call my parents and my friends. My phone showed that I was outside of network coverage, so I can't make any calls. I was outside of network coverage in the middle of a town. I tried to sleep, and somehow I managed to fall asleep. When I woke up the next morning, everything was in order. My roommates were there, and I had cell phone service. I asked my friend, where was everyone yesterday? And I asked the time when my phone turned off. He said that they were in the dorm. I was thinking about that the whole day, and I couldn't make any sense of it. A year or so back, I had a friend request from someone on Facebook and so did my husband. I had no idea who she was, didn't recognize her photo, etc. My husband was the same. As she had lots of mutual friends, including my father-in-law, I accepted it. Here's the weird thing. She apparently went to church, youth club, and most church events with both of us. She is the same age as us, went to the same high school with my husband and his sister. Everyone else knows her except us. 
I drudged through her Facebook looking for photos of her as a teen. No recognition at all. I literally have no memory of her, same as my husband. But she vividly remembers us, recounting stories about things we used to do together and stuff like that. I remember the things we did, but not her. Here's where things get stranger. I found an old address book with her name, phone number, and address in it from that time. And she has photos of us all together. She is literally our glitch in the matrix. Any thoughts? This happened about two years ago. I'm a filmmaker, but since I don't make a living from it, I also work in a museum in Paris. The job has good perks because you can get an apartment really cheap and big compared to the expensive shitholes you can find in Paris. But you need to be lucky. Since I work part time there, I wasn't in great luck to begin with, but I started to call the guy who's in charge with the apartments like two times a week to ask him if he had any flat to offer me. Every time he says he has nothing. One morning I call him and oh my god, he offers me to visit a flat. He sends me an email with all the details and the next morning I went to visit it. I remember telling myself I wasn't sure this flat was going to do it because it seemed too far from the center of Paris and it was in an area I didn't know. When I arrived, I was surprised to see how nice the neighborhood was and the apartment was perfect as well. So on my way home, I call the guy who's in charge to tell him I like the apartment and that I'd like to apply. When I tell him the address, he seems confused. I ask him what's wrong and he says he doesn't know what I'm talking about. So I say, I'm talking about the apartment you offered me to visit. You sent me an email with all the information about it. He replies by saying the one he sent me is a different address. That is really far from Paris by the way. So he doesn't know what I'm talking about. I too began to get confused and while I'm still on the phone with him I check my emails and the email is gone. The only one I have from him is the one he's referring to at the moment. So I don't know what the hell happened. I mean, I couldn't imagine an email with an address I didn't even know. And when I went there, I was expected by the caretaker who showed me around and let me visit the apartment. And the fact that the guy who sent me the email in the first place doesn't even understand how I got there is really unsettling. The cool thing is, is that I got the apartment. I've been living there for about two years and I really love it. So this happened about six or seven years ago, 2012 or 2013, I can't remember exactly. My oldest brother, I have three, was living in China at the time teaching English to school children. So one day, my mother, myself, and my two other brothers had gone out somewhere that morning and we arrived back home sometime between noon and 1 p.m. When we got home, we all went off and did our own things. I walked upstairs maybe a minute after my mom had, and in order to get to the bedroom my younger brother and I shared, you had to pass by a hallway that has the master bedroom at the end of it. As I passed the hallway, I looked towards the master bedroom and see my mom just standing there, staring towards the bathroom that had her closet in it, with a look of fear on her face. I asked her if everything was okay, and she turned to look at me, and without saying a word, she walked up to me. She then whispered to me that she thinks there is someone hiding in her closet. I asked her if she saw someone, and she said no. She just walked into the bathroom and smelled what she said was unmistakably a man's body odor. I didn't believe her at first, so I walked into the bathroom myself, and sure enough, she was right. When I smelt that body odor, a chill went down my spine. It was definitely a man's B.O. At this point, my other two brothers had come upstairs and my mom told them what was going on. They both went to the bathroom and smelt the body odor. We decided to unlock the sliding glass door in the bedroom that led to a balcony. At this point, my other two brothers had come upstairs and my mom told them what was going on. They both went to the bathroom and smelt the B.O. We decided to unlock the sliding glass door in the bedroom that led to a balcony, closed the bedroom door, and called out to whoever was in the closet to just leave. We informed this person that we didn't want any confrontation and just wanted him to leave. About 15 or 20 minutes go by and we hear nothing. No footsteps of someone leaving and no sliding glass door opening. 
One of my brothers waited downstairs to see if anyone would climb down or jump off the balcony. He saw nothing. Finally, my two brothers and I decided to muster up enough courage and just go into the closet and confront this person. We find that no one is in there, but the B.O. is still present in the bathroom. We all just kind of shake it off and forget about it. The next day, my mom tells us that she had emailed my brother, the one living in China at the time, and told him about what had happened. He then tells her that his apartment had been broken into in the middle of the night while he had spent the night somewhere else with a friend of his. With the 15-hour time difference between California and Beijing, our noon to 1 p.m. encounter would have been between 3 to 4 a.m. in Beijing. I think the break-in of his apartment happened at the same time, and by some glitch in the matrix, we smelt the intruder's body odor. 